Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Be Quiet's Dark Power Pro 11, 850 watt, 80 plus platinum certified. What is this? Why should you watch and why should you care? The short version is if you're building a high end premium computer, if you want a power supply that can run the best of the best computers, if you want a high level of power efficiency, an absolute ton of connectors, lots of features, extremely silent operation, then you have definitely come to the right place. This power supply is meant for premium top-end builds. Are you building a new Skylake X system? Do you want to build a top-of-the-line overclocked KB Lake system? Ryzen 7 or the upcoming AMD Threadripper? You have definitely come to the right place. Now let me stay, state up front that this is not for mid-level and low-end systems. This power supply is over 150 US dollars. It is not a cheap power supply, but it's a premium power supply with top-end components. 100% Japanese capacitors rated to 105 degrees Celsius. Your choice of a single 12 volt or four separate 12 volt rails. It produces up to 840 of its 850 watts on the 12 volt rail, and that's very important. And then finally, a 135 millimeter fluid dynamic bearing fan that shuts itself off when it's not needed. This thing is incredibly amazing. It is a little bit expensive, but if you're building a $1,500 plus computer, it is an appropriate power supply for a premium top end machine. Now, alternatives really briefly. If you're looking for something in the $50 to $70 price range, this sort of thing is way overkill. Uh, there are many other power supplies you can consider. An 80 plus bronze unit would be fine in that price point for say a $500, $700, anything up to maybe a $1,000 machine. But if you really are building a premium top end computer, if you're getting a 1080 or a GTX 1080 Ti, if you're getting a, a 6, 8 or 10 core processor that you want to overclock, this is not overkill. The smoothness of power delivery, the premium solid state capacitors, the high level of components included, the stable power delivery is worth paying for if that's the kind of machine that you are building. Just a couple of things before I actually unbox this and show you all the connectors, cables, and everything that it comes with. 80 plus platinum simply refers to the power efficiency of it. This is up to 94% power efficient. Now, at very low and very high power draws, it's not going to be that efficient, but that's true of all power supplies. So you may be thinking, do I really need 850 watts? Well, if you are concerned about power efficiency, you do. Because once you get much above 600 watts power draw on a 850 watt unit, the efficiency actually drops. It's a bit of a bell curve. And so you want this level of power power supply if that sort of thing is important to you. Now this power supply is extremely efficient. Gold and bronze units are a little bit less efficient than this. There is one tier above it, but it tends to be pretty expensive, which is titanium, and it's only 2% more power efficient. This does come with two 8 pin CPU power connectors for the best of the best top end boards. It comes with nine PCI Express power connectors. This will support up to quad SLI Quad Crossfire. It is SLI and Crossfire certified. It comes with eight serial ATA cables, six Molex power connectors. It even comes with two floppy connectors. It will also allow case fans to be plugged directly into the power supply. There are four case fan plugs on here. So if you want the load on the power supply to control the speed of your case fans, that's an option. Or if you have a case with extra case fans and you've run out of plugs on your motherboard, plug them into the power supply. It's a nice extra feature. There is an overclocking switch on the power supply. When's the last time you had a power supply with an overclocking switch? By default, this comes out of the box running in four rail mode but you can switch it to a massive single rail mode depending upon your needs. Now for most people, this isn't gonna matter, but this is actually the first power supply that I can remember ever using that gives you the choice of single rail versus multi-rail power delivery. Soon I will be doing a build with this power supply. It's gonna be installed in that Dark Base Pro 900 behind me with a Ryzen 7 1800X CPU installed into a very nice motherboard. I'll be overclocking it, putting excellent cooling on it, and showing you just how well it does. This computer is gonna have the best of everything. A GTX 1080 Ti graphics card, multiple hard drives, multiple SSDs. It's exactly what this was built for. So if you're interested in building a similar type machine, give the Dark Power Pro 11 a look. Linked in the description below is going to be links directly to this power supply on both Amazon and Newegg. Please go check it out down in the links below. Check out the current price and buy it where it makes the most sense to you. Okay, that's enough talking. Let's get to the unboxing. 
Well, that looks very, very nice. Look how well this is packed inside here. Oh, it slid down just a bit. This this looks nice. There's a, there's a manual in here. I'm not used to seeing decent manuals for power supplies. There's a lot of technical details in here, which is very nice. What do we have here? We've got a box and some foam, form-fitting foam. Be sure to save your packaging with a nice quality power supply like this. Um, if you ever need to take it out, pack it, perhaps hopefully not ever have to ship it back for warranty purposes. It's nice to keep a box like this. I'll show you how it's packed in here. Lift this up. That is a nice packing job. I've commented on my channel in the past that quality products tend to come in quality packaging and cheap products tend to come in uh, cheap packaging. Even with power supplies, I've found that to be true. The $40, $50, $60 dollar power supplies, I mean, they're fine, but they're just, they're wrapped in a plastic bag and they're just kind of shoved in the box with a piece of cardboard thrown on top. There's nothing fancy. This is really nice. It just indicates that they took the time to make it uh, quality. Oh, this is a box. This, here, let me take the power supply out first. Okay, I have to say this is really nice. Yes, I had a look in here. This box holds all of the modular cables and the power cable that goes to the wall. Now, high-end power supplies generally come with like a pouch or a little bag to hold all your extra cables because you may not use every modular cable that comes with the power supply. However, this box is by far the best means of keeping them that I've seen. Now, you may think that's no big deal. However, um, most of my high-end power supplies or modular power supplies, even going back five years, if I open up a computer that's several years old and go, oh, I need to add some more cables, I need an extra connector or an extra serial ATA cable, where are the cables? If you didn't plug everyone in, where did you keep them? This box will leave no doubt as to where they are. That is very nice and there's plenty of room. We have a very large, very thick power cable. This has zero chance of ever overheating. Less expensive power supplies, use much thinner lower gauge cables. Make sure that you don't use a cheap cable with a high-end power supply such as this. Now in here, we have all of the actual modular cables themselves and they are black all the way to the end. They're sleeved to protect them, but they're also, there's no ketchup and mustard colors here. They're fully black all the way to the end, which is really nice. There's a bag of connectors here. This looks like it contains, we'll get to that in a minute. Here is your overclocking connector. There's actually a switch you can connect to the outside of your machine. We'll go ahead and take these out. Okay, so I've taken everything out of the box, laid it on the table to make sure it's all here. Now, as I said before, this connector right here is the overclocking switch. You do not have to install it, but it does go into a small connector on the back. And this is actually a back plate which goes into one of your rear slots that makes it accessible from the back of your machine. You can actually switch it between single 12 volt rail and quad four, uh, 12 volt rails from the back of your machine, which is kind of cool. This bag, as I said before, has a variety of connectors. It has twist ties and some other things in here. It has the case fan connectors and a few other things. Now, these five bundles here are the main bundles. Now, first of all, this is nice. They wrap them in this black Velcro to make it easier to keep them organized. When we take this off, I wanna show you a couple of things. First of all, this is two cables here. This one is one of the PCI Express power connectors. This plugs into the power supply into this end here because it's a modular power supply. You only need one of these if you have one video card. Each of these is a six plus two, so you can either make it two six pin, one eight pin, one six pin, or two eight pin PCI Express power connectors as you need. Now the other one is interesting and I'm actually really glad to see that they did this. This is a single six pin PCI Express power connector and it's actually labeled motherboard. The motherboard I'm actually installing into that is the MSI X370 X Power Titanium motherboard. I've previously done an unboxing and overview on my channel. That motherboard has a six pin PCI Express power connector on the bottom of the board to provide power to the bottom end of the board for extreme overclocking. This cable allows you to have a simple non-messy cable run either behind the motherboard tray or around the side and down the bottom to your motherboard without having to use one of the cables that is really meant for a video card. This is a nice touch and I will be using this in the build in that machine. Next up, we have two more. This is one, two. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Now earlier in the video, I said we had nine. I misspoke, we have seven. Seven including the motherboard. So there are six six plus two PCI Express power connectors. That would drive three 
uh, video cards, for example, that each need two 8-pin PCI Express power connectors. And frankly, any more than that, you probably need to go with a 1,000 or 1,200 watt power supply rather than 850. Now, I personally don't recommend Crossfire or SLI for the average person. It comes with its own set of quirks, and it's not something I think most people should do. But if you're either mining or perhaps you have a non-gaming use where you need two or three video cards, this is absolutely going to provide the power that you need for that. Next up, we have the cable that actually I'm not going to be using and most of you won't. These are Molex connectors. These are the four pin old school connectors from long time ago. Now, some people will have a need for these. This has a total of six of them. If you need some, great. If not, these you'll never unwrap and you'll just leave in the box. I'm going to leave them in the box. I'm never going to use them, but I took them out to show them to you. Next up, we have the CPU power connectors. Now, these are important. Most modern motherboards, and any motherboard you're going to use this power supply, is going to need at least one 8-pin CPU power connector somewhere on the top of the board. That would be this one right here. It's a single 8-pin. It doesn't split. Then we have a 4 plus 4 CPU power connector. Some motherboards want an 8-pin and a single 4-pin. But there are an increasing number of top-end boards, especially on Skylake X and probably Threadripper, that are going to want two 8-pin CPU power connectors. No problem, put them together and you've got that covered. Now there are some older boards, this is generally not going to be anything newer, but there are some older boards that do have a 4-pin Molex that goes directly into the board. And the power supply does provide one of these. In fact, it's labeled motherboard right here on it unlikely you will use this connector, but on the off chance that you need a four pin Molex connector designed to run into the motherboard, it does provide that as well. And finally, that leads us to the serial ATA connectors. Now in the serial ATA connector cable, there are two different types of cables. I'll get to the other ones in a second, but this has two serial ATA connectors, two four pin Molex and a floppy connector. Now, if you don't need more than six serial ATA connectors and you don't need a Molex connector, then skip this one. But if you need a single cable with both a Molex and a serial ATA on the same cable, they've got you covered. These two cables are fairly straightforward. Three serial ATA cables per cable to provide for routing. Now, what's nice about having all these serial ATA cables is, for example, when you have large cases like that that have multiple three and a half or multiple two and a half inch drive trays, if you're setting up a machine with a lot of storage, or perhaps you're setting up RAID or even maybe a workstation or server, and you're going to put four, six, or even up to eight hard drives into it for lots and lots of internal storage, then this provides enough serial ATA connectors to provide power to all of those. Yes, you can use splitters, and frankly, this provides all the power in the world for all the drives you'd ever care to connect, but it's nice to have native connectors and not have to use splitters. I just thought I would show you this right here. This is the back plate that goes onto the back of your machine in one of your free slots. This is actually a very nice looking switch here. Unfortunately, the cables are not black, so that's a personal preference. But if you want to be able to turn on and off the 12 volt uh, single rail versus four rail operation, you can do so with this switch in the back. Why you'd need to, I don't know. By default, this comes in four rail mode. However, if you wish to just permanently jump it to single rail mode, you can do so with this included jumper. And it is a black cable and it just plugs. I know it's white right here, but you won't see it because it plugs into a connector here on the power supply. So just plug this in and then it's permanently in single rail mode or leave it out and you're in 12, uh, four rail mode. Now you might be asking the question, why would I want one or the other? That topic is outside the scope of this video. But what I will say is for the vast majority of people, it makes zero difference because ultimately the power supply can handle the load either way. Only extreme corner cases where people have very, very specific requirements, usually entailing uh, three or more video cards, maybe even a, a dual CPU server would even care about this. The average person, even building a nice high-end 16 core machine, even putting in two graphics cards, you shouldn't carry the way it's not going to matter. This is one of the four uh, fan connectors for cases. If you're interested, now you don't have to use it, totally optional, but there's four connectors on the back here. This end goes into the power supply and the other end provides you with two choices to drive case fans if you want to plug in extra case fans. There is a standard four pin Molex. There are some older case fans that still use Molex connectors, generally not modern ones, but even as recently as five years ago, I've got cases that still used four pin Molex connectors to drive case fans, so that's an option. Of course, you can use the standard Molex connectors in the power supply, but this is more intelligent. This lets the power supply know that a fan is connected to that rather than, say, 
say, a hard drive or something else. And then you've got the more modern, smaller connector for case fans as well. And there are four of these cables included. Use zero through four as your needs may arise. They were nice enough to provide some additional Velcro zip ties, so use these to tie off the uh, cables inside of your case without actually permanently tying them off. Nice to see. A collection of one-time use zip ties, which can be handy, especially if you're putting in more permanent cables, maybe routed behind the motherboard. They're smaller, easier to install, they take up less space. And then finally, a bunch of case screws to put the power supply in. You have the uh, longer threaded single flat screws that you would use with a screwdriver. And then we have some thumb screws, which is actually kind of nice. Overall, lots of stuff included with this power supply. Finally, that brings us to the power supply itself. I have to say, this is one of the nicest looking power supply labels I've seen. Now that's a personal preference. Some have very little label at all. Some just have a small logo. This looks sharp. If you want to show off what you've got, if you want something that looks nice, I think that looks great. And it doesn't have any real colors on it, so it's not going to clash with an RGB build or perhaps uh, a different color scheme if you uh, want a red and black build or a white and black build or something else. It looks very nice. The top of the power supply does have a logo on it, although it's not too bad. You could peel it off, I suppose, if you really wanted to. And then the bottom of the power supply shows the 135 millimeter fluid dynamic bearing fan. This fan will shut itself off when it's not needed. It runs very silently. I mean, it's basically the best you can get. These are very nice. All the high-end power supplies generally have fluid dynamic bearing fans, and these are very, very quiet. Now on this end, you can see the actual wall connector right here, and then we do have a physical power switch. Good, most do have these days, especially good ones. But in case you ever need to completely kill power to the power supply, you can certainly do that with the switch. There is no 110 to 220 or 240 uh, voltage converter because it's intelligent. You can plug this into anything from 100 to 240 volts anywhere in the world. You'll need an appropriate power cable, of course, but you can supply that locally if perhaps you move or you need something else. But this will automatically detect the voltage voltage from the wall and account for it. So there's nothing to accidentally set incorrectly on that end. And then we come to the business end of the power supply. This is where all the modular connectors are. This is where you're going to plug that entire mess of cables in, or perhaps just a few of them. Only plug in the cables you need, improve the airflow in your system, use this wonderful box to store the extra cables and connectors that you're not using for the future. You can see it's got a nice label. Overall, this is a very nice package. I have to say, I'm very pleasantly surprised with how nice everything comes together. It just shows the difference between a cheap power supply and a premium power supply. So this has been my unboxing and overview of the Be Quiet Dark Power Pro 11 850 watt 80 plus platinum power supply. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with that big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section. And as always, check out the video description. Links to both Amazon and Newegg for this power supply will be down there. And in the future, when I actually do the build with the Ryzen 7 1800X in there with this power supply, that full build video will be on my channel. Be sure to subscribe to receive notifications of when that comes out. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video.